Okay, I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Stormwater Management Board on December 9th, 2020. And the first order of business is approval of the minutes for October 14th and November 10th. I move approval of the minutes from October 14th and November the 10th. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All right. Are there any comments, corrections about the minutes? Well, hearing none, um, Mr. Quillman, if you would please call the roll for the approval of the minutes for October 14th and November 10th. I will. Uh, for October 14th first, Lee Jones. Here. Trying to write Randolph. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Penny Gibbons. Yes. Uh, approval for the October uh, 14th minutes uh, is, is there. November 10th meeting. Lee Jones. Yes. Tron Enright Randolph. Yes. And Penny Gibbons. Yes. The November minutes are approved. Thank you. We'll move on to old business. Um, Ordinance to amend Chapter 766, Stormwater System Fee and Fund. I would request, uh, by the pleasure of the board, uh, if we could adjust the agenda and um, move to the uh, new business and cycle back around, I, I think that would be a, a good way of moving forward with today's meeting. You want to make a motion? I would uh, make a motion that we amend today's agenda and item uh, three becomes item four and item four becomes item three. So we start with new business and finish with old business. Second. Uh, Terry, I guess you have to call the roll for this. Okay. Lee Jones? Yes. Tron in right Randolph? Yes. And Penny Givens? Yes. And we'll move on to new business, the stormwater expenditure report. Um, as I go through these, uh, I would have to say that nothing's really standing out. We bought uh, an inventory, re replenished our inventory of pipe uh, in, in uh, November uh, going on down. Uh, we had, um, you see there in, under the 30s, there was a replaced glass and rental equipment. Um, what happened is we had a rented, a, I think it was, it was a little mini excavator. And at some point a tree limb fell and, and broke the side windshield. And we had to replace that. Um, looking at the others. Final drawings, transportation review, um, Baby Creek. That's uh, finish up the final drawings there, and we're moving into the right of way purchases on that job. Um, Harry, uh, just to jump in quickly, since we have a lot more uh, people in attendance, will you mm -hmm. just clarify that this is a certain phase, and that's the completion, so people don't uh, miscue that or misconstrue that as. Uh, it being completely final to the complete construction. So. Yes, that's that's uh, finalizing the design drawings. Uh, and at this point, we've moved into right away purchases, and um, uh, the, the, I can't tell you a percentage. The, the right away purchasing is underway. They've made offers, made contact, and they're working through that at this point. Um, and I, I can't even give you the word there because I'm not sure how well, how smoothly the right-of-way negotiations will, will progress. 
So that's about all I can tell you there, Tron. No, that's perfect. Thank okay. you, Terry. There's no equipment costs for the for the month. Uh, if you go down at the bottom, the three active jobs are the Baby Creek project that you see. Um, it's nearly complete. The last 10% that you see uh, to be charged is for right away, um, right away negotiations. Stip Road and Morris Creek Pike Road is nearly complete also. And we're waiting on word from uh, the Corps for the NEPA permit there. Uh, and Monroe County Garage, it is, it's complete. I just met with the contractor um, this week. I was holding 10% retainage on that for, uh, for him to get some vegetation and ground cover down. And he's working on that. So that's, that's where we are with those. And I didn't see James, Jim Faber, uh, but the year to date, uh, that's changed a little bit because I had incorrectly put in uh, uh, encumbered expense, not put in encumbered expenses, expenses from last year that we carried over. Um, this week, I went back through and reviewed all of those, including our encumbered expenses or encumbered funds that we carried over. We're at a 46.5% of our, uh, um, our year to date budget. So, um, and this 1.74 for the month is, is correct. I believe I got those correct now, if anybody's got any questions on those. So the um, Monroe County garage is the actual construction. It's not the planning or the design of that one. Yes, the Monroe County garage, I don't want to be confusing with the building they built out there. This is for um, a site requirement that we, we um, committed to do as part of our IDEM audit uh, back in 19. And it's a uh, uh, structure with three, three phases in it to try and uh, filter out the salt as best we can from the uh, salt and sand uh, buildings out there. All right. Are there any other questions? Won't be a problem. Um, next, we have emails from Chris Hill, James Farmer, and Bill Shonoff. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Regarding me. the. Yeah. Was Reading. there more? Yeah, let me explain here. Um, I sent the agenda okay. out earlier, and then we received it with that and had these three letters. Uh, then we received several letters uh, after the article in the paper came out. So I sent an, an amended agenda, which you're looking at, and there's several more letters at, at the end of it. And since then, um, I didn't want to amend the agenda here at the last day. So I'd sent out emails to everyone that, that's had shown interest to show that there was another set of letters that went out yesterday and then again today. And I can tell you that in the emails you've received, you have all letters. I've accounted for everything. So um, if people are attending and, and they don't see their, uh, actually, I think there's only, no, there were several that didn't make it in, maybe a half dozen that didn't make it onto the agenda. So if you don't see your letter in there, ask about it and uh, we'll pull it up. Thank you, Lee. Okay, we, at least I did receive the email with the letters today and had a chance to read them. Um, Commissioner Givens, Graham Wright, did you have, Sean, did you have a chance to look at those? Uh, yes, I, I read them and uh, Terry was pretty thorough with sending follow-up uh, letters. There was actually a, uh, handwritten letters. Uh, the cursive on one of them was a little difficult, but I was able to read it. Uh, Julie just joined us. So um, I guess if, uh, if she was able to read them, I'm curious um, how uh, the board would like to proceed. Um, I, I don't think we're going to read these out loud. Was that the intent or do we want to move to public comment? Um, yeah, let me jump in here, guys. I think 
this is all relating to the hearing that you're conducting today uh, on uh, the amendment of the stormwater fee. So if you want to uh, commence that hearing, uh, have Terry's report on it, and uh, then uh, you can decide to, whether you want to read the letters into uh, the record or just acknowledge them and have Terry summarize their substance and then uh, take public comment. Okay, what's, how, do, how does the rest of the commission want to proceed? I, I, would, I would prefer if we could go ahead and have the, a short presentation um, from Terry and then we can talk about it and then open it up for public comment. That would be great. Okay, does that, is that agreeable for you, Penny, and you, Tron? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, and Mr. Quillman, if you would please go ahead and give us a presentation. Oh, I'm sorry, Lisa. Uh, sorry, I, 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 before Terry gives a presentation for maybe the letters and things, uh, maybe the FSG report, um, I just want to give a little bit of um, background on the stormwater, not much, I want to keep this brief as possible. Um, I know um, in reading a couple things that people do have um, a little bit misunderstanding, this is not a $40 a month increase. This is a $35 a year increase. Um, it has nothing to do with water bills. It doesn't, some of the, these have, uh, items have been mentioned in emails. This is a storm water um, fee that was, that began in 2012. And it comes on your tax bill. And again, it's $35, what you pay right now for residential is $35 and 16 cents a year. This is not a monthly charge. So storm water consists of now of a six man crew. Um, over the years, um, the stormwater budget grew. Um, in 2016, um, right after I took over the, this portion of the department, um, we started, we adopted on the stormwater board passed a stormwater long range uh, management plan. This is how we could prioritize our bigger projects that we are unable to do in house with our in house crews. Um, I think a lot of comments when I came on board was, why aren't we spending stormwater money? Why aren't we getting projects completed? So the first step that we did was pass the stormwater long range plan. That was kind of our tool to begin um, prioritizing our bigger projects that are unable to do in house. So that's what we did. Terry and I um, brought projects to the board. Um, we prioritized and chose about four projects that we felt um, were important not um, that had a residential impact. Uh, we had people that um, on our, one of the roads that we picked our projects is a dead end road, uh, one way in, one way out for 12 residents and it um, ex gets extremely flooded um, and they can't leave their house for days. Um, the Stip Road, Moores Creek project uh, that uh, we had a per uh, resident in that area last spring that was unable to be at their home for three months. So these were some of the reasons why we chose some of these bigger projects out of the long range plan. We didn't know the cost of these projects until we could get them designed. That's when we could see a true dollar on what was happening. So those numbers started coming in, as you can see of what we spent over the last two years on design fees is tremendous, it's expensive. Um, we do road projects out of uh, different budgets every day. Um, the cost of these projects and to correct some of these projects is extremely expensive. So as we moved forward and we were seeing that the cost of these projects coming in what well exceeded what our budget could sustain. Um, we have a cartograph project or program in-house. This uh, tackles all the requests that we take every day for stormwater requests and people that are flooded in their homes, people that their uh, driveways are flooded out. Uh, it could be a number of reasons of what is happening. We have over, you know, I can go over all those numbers with you of over how many open requests that we have. 
Um, so we realize also that our crew is um, not large enough to um, keep up with the problems that are in Monroe County. Um, so I just want to try and give a little bit of a background of why we got to where we're at today. And in the, it's, we've been looking at this for the last year of what direction that we needed to go to be able to um, not design these projects and then throw them on a shelf and never see them to fruition. Um, I don't think that's um, wise on, on my part as um, management in the department. I think if we um, design a project, we move forward and we try and see it to completion and we find the ways to get that done. However, we couldn't do that until we saw what it was gonna cost to build these projects. Now we're at an $8 million price tag, which sounds a lot. I. I I completely understand that, um, but um, it's also, um, some of these are safety issues. It's, uh, uh, like I said, it's people uh, being um, taken from their homes for months and months due to flooding uh, roadways that we're trying to correct. So um, I'll let Terry give his report and, and go from that. I just want to kind of give everybody a brief background of stormwater. Um, and again, we're talking, you know, Whatever the board decides, um, it's their decision and moving forward or we stop right here. But I just wanted to make sure everyone understood that this is not a monthly charge that we're imposing. Um, and it has nothing to do with the water that you use in your home or anything of that matter. Um, and if um, I'll turn it over to Terry. Lisa, I would like to add one thing. We're uh, looking into an inspector and the idea with the inspector is to improve construction standards where a lot of our calls for uh, support now um, are directed toward uh, storm sewers that were put in improperly and are now failing. We've got to go back out and do maintenance on them where if they were, uh, uh, we had a, an eye out there watching them, we could uh, improve those construction standards. Um, the other thing I'd like to, Yes, Penny. I have a question. Oh, um, I know that you get contacted, the department gets contacted about problems and there are some that are more severe than others. Do you have any numbers that will tell us, you know, what kind of backlog the department's facing? So you got those, Lisa. I do. Um, so at this time, uh, we have 150 open requests. We prioritize those between high, medium, low for urgency. Um, so to give you an example, in the month of November, we were busy down uh, working on a job that took a couple of weeks on Cherry Lane that's in our long range uh, stormwater plan. We had actually contracted out part of that project uh, with a contractor due to the cost of that. We are unable, according to Indiana Code, to do that in-house. But to the remainder of that drainage issue down there, we have multiple driveway pipes uh, and road pipes that still need to be replaced. So we're doing that one by one with our crew. So we've been there a lot in the month of November. So we were only able to close about 15 requests. On a daily, we probably get um, eight to 10 requests every week of new requests. This is not talking about anything that's a repeated request. It's something that's a brand new issue that's gonna go into our pool. And then we prioritize it the best we can on um, the personnel that we have. Um, so no, we, we don't foresee us ever getting caught up um, at this rate. Um, so, and, and it also depends a lot on weather. Of course, if we get a lot of rains, we get a lot more requests. So, but as of right now we have, and, and that we've stayed pretty consistent of having over 150 open requests that we um, don't have the means to fix. It's out of our control to fix. Uh, we don't have the manpower to fix it. Um, so it, it's a, a number of different areas that we have to look at when we prioritize our projects. There's also a good breakdown on that um, in this uh, stormwater services transition and business plan. Um, I was going to request TSD to copy and paste that in the link for any people that came in uh, late. Uh, we have links to all of that. It's, if we put in a packet, it wouldn't be emailed out. Um, and it, within that report, it's on page seven. It, it breaks it down. So it, it, 
basically, you know, from 2017 to 2019, they, uh, the crew has been able to resolve about uh, 448 of those. Um, and 135 are remained open in like a medium uh, uh, description. Or, um, and then there's a high and low. So there's 11 and high and 73 and low. Um, brings a little more content to that question. Um, so it, it looks like, you know, there's 11 high priority projects out there and meet and, you know, 200 and some of medium and low, which I'm not even sure. Would you say that that are all things that stormwater would assist on or are any of these just requests um, that uh, once it really kind of got to action that aren't what we would do? Like, have these kind of been vetted in a sense? Because I get a lot of calls for people for, uh, at the surveyor's office to do a private survey. And once I call them back and figure out that's what they're asking, it's like, my office doesn't do that. Would you no. say these are all within the services that Stormwater pro provides? Every request that we get, if we're not familiar, every request gets investigated. That's how okay. we know where we prioritize it. So it's... Um, Every one of these requests have to do with stormwater, and then we keep everything that's separate from our, either our bridge crew or our normal highway maintenance. Um, that is in a completely different category, so we can keep stormwater completely contained to itself. Right, and um, reading through those comments, I just wanted to uh, talk on something you were speaking about. Some of the comments uh, now, stormwater does uh, pertain to road conditions, but some of them seem like they might think that it pertained to all road conditions um, on a, one of the public uh, letters that was sent. And I just wanted to clarify that there are certain aspects to that that apply to stormwater. So. We, we are going to have a chance to ask questions and make comments after Mr. Quillman has given his presentation. Would it be okay if he goes ahead with that right now? And then we can ask all of these questions later. That's okay. All right, thank, thank you. Um, Mr. Quillman, if you would please give us your presentation. I really don't have a, a formalized presentation. What I would like to say is that the proposal is, is currently, or fee is currently is at 3516 a year and we're proposing to move it to 75 in some cents a year um, that's parallels what the city has done it parallels and we're well below the state average of other ms4s um, we're aware I'm fully aware of, of the economy and that it's difficult times for people. Um, and we've been working to bring this uh, forward for quite some time before the, uh, we had the issue with the virus. Uh, and it, it just seems to me that the best thing to do is, is move forward with it at this point. Um, as, I, as I read through the this letters, I understand that uh, people's feelings, um, I'm empathetic, um, but we're, we're trying to run a department here and meet the needs of the county also. And we're trying to meet some requirements that IDEM is putting on us. Um, so other than that, I, I really don't have a whole lot to say on it. Lisa pretty well covered everything in my mind. Well, and I, yeah, and I will add that the report, if anybody has not seen the FSG report, so we did hire a professional, the board did actually, um, to go through our numbers, our projects, our priorities, and um, there's different options in that. Um, they uh, has been presented to the stormwater management board um, and to our department on different avenues that we can go to one, um, to add on inspector, uh, to get things right. Um, to help the community with future development, um, to um, new crew, um, additional crew to help the in-house needs, and then also to how we can get those bigger projects built and um, so show, you know, progress within the department. 
So, and, and Terry's right. We are very sympathetic with the pandemic. It's, it's hit everybody in, in different ways. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that we could get five inches of rain tomorrow and somebody's not going to be able to get to their house for three months. It doesn't change that, you know, we'll be coming to spring rains and, um, we have a whole road flooded that 12 people can't exit their homes. Um, and we worry about emergency services, things like that. So um, the pandemic didn't take those um, concerns away from me. Um, it, those kind of things weigh heavy on me and, and Terry personally, really. Um, so that's why we've moved in this direction of trying to actually get things done um, in the community that has existed for a, a little while and, uh, and, and move forward. But of course, it's um, not our decision. We're just here to uh, provide the facts and the information to to the board. Thank you. All right. Um, any comments or questions, Commissioner Gibbons? Um, I had I had one, and then the, oh, well, when I look at the planning, num the amount that we spent on the planning and and whatever, um, that's, we've budgeted over three quarters of a million dollars. And I would hate to see that wasted because we didn't move forward. Um, so I, I think that that's important too, that we keep that in mind. You know, we, we use the money wisely to look at, at things. So now we have to decide how much of it we're gonna follow up on. So I've been reviewing previous meeting minutes and you're right, we've spent some money to get to preliminary phases, but um, some of those were uh, brought to the board um, with, uh, with uh, grant opportunities. Uh, uh, Mount Tabor Ridge Road was supposed to be an in-dot project with an 80-20 split and it hastily got to us right after we were looking at another project. Uh, so we could kind of fit that timeline. We weren't able to get that uh, grant. And um, at that time, it's like we have a lot of projects um, and we need to move, you know, uh, so we can focus on those projects. Um, there was a couple other projects where it was kind of, you know, uh, we weren't able to get the community crossing portion. Um, so, uh, you know, just from, since, in 2018, uh, you know, I, I just made this, uh, it's in the minutes, and I made this comment uh, where, uh, I'll read myself in third person, Tron said, as we keep moving projects forward, this amount is nice. Um, I'm referring to another project. It's a low amount and we can get some engineering work done and it, and it, and it gets a lot of the cost but we still have a lot of projects or it gets a lot of the costs done, but we still have a lot of the projects out there. And I am still concerned about uh, continuing to just pile up projects, but be urgent and needed. Um, so, you know, I, I go on to say that this is a juggling act and I don't think it's really simple. Uh, Lisa does a tremendous job of trying to uh, get those grants in, uh, you know, uh, shared uh, partnerships as soon as they're available. And I think that is tremendous and we shouldn't stop trying to do that because if we could get a cost sharing thing, that's gonna save a lot. But um, that's why some of these projects are still out there. Um, and we grow the staff and I, and I made comments about, you know, that being a fixed cost and, you know, we need to make sure that we're really looking at our cash balance and moving slowly as we're expanding our staff. Um, so everything just keeps moving um, quite fast. I do know that we need to make some adjustments. I don't know what the best number is. And also bonding. Bonding needs to be almost, you know, a separate conversation. I know we're looking at increasing, but all of, you know, it's like so much is baked into the cake already. Um, I would be wondering if we increase certain amounts, can we do a project 
in a couple of years and then move to the next one. I mean, uh, if we bond out for these projects, we're looking to pay out that obligation back for the next 10 years. What can we get done in the next 10 years if we just increase the fee and then use that money towards those projects? I, I uh, completely agree with uh, Terry's assessment of the need of an inspector. Um, I'm 110% supportive of whatever needs to be done to get that inspector in place because that's going to really improve a lot of, of what stormwater does, but even what other departments do. So I think that's essential. Um, as of now, due to the fact that a lot of this is tied into bonding, a lot of it's tied into four projects I can't be supportive of the amount that we have it at. And I would be immune, uh, accepting to kind of try to retrofit, you know, uh, that increase we should every year to support the inspector and the equipment. Um, but I'm going to be a little hands off when it comes to increasing it so we can bond for uh, all four of these projects. Um, I think we could achieve that within 10 years. And also other questions, since I'm not as familiar with bonding as my, uh, my colleagues are, um, does that then freeze our, us to a certain extent for the next 10 years? So then we can't really take on another large project or are we gonna just have to go through bonding and more bonding and more bonding? And that's not a position I'm willing to take. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Enright. Um, Commissioner Thomas, do you have any comments or questions? Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't really have any questions, but because I think we have gone over this quite a bit over the last several months, and I do appreciate that. It's not like this has been. <clears throat> a surprise. Um, uh, and there's been a lot of work that's gone into preparing plans. And I think that's been very smart. And, uh, but we couldn't predict COVID. And that's part of the issue is we get caught having to do so many things as commissioners, um, especially recently that um, it's hard for us to always be pushing these issues. And sometimes they come to us. But um, as for the bond, I think bonding is fine, but it depends, and it depends how much you ask for uh, as to how much of your um, tax revenue you're going to lose uh, to that bond payment. And um, so, and, and you know, there's there's only so much you can bond, um, but it works. Um, so, um, so the couple things I I really see the need to. Uh, increase our staff um, to get some new equipment in. Uh, we have real needs. Uh, that cannot be denied. That is, um, we have been um, scraping by, as it were, uh, and getting a heck of a lot done on not very much money. And, and um, I noticed in some of the letters, there's some discussion about, well, what other counties pay? Well, other counties don't have what we have in terms of um, the topography, every county has unique topography, but in our terrain, it is especially um, um, problematic and it can be problematic, but it has to be addressed no matter what we're building or who's building what. But I really think that um, given COVID um, and given a lot of uncertainty um, about when we're going to emerge, um, um, I see that I think that we should postpone this, but not for long. So I would, I would like us all to think about um, a January 2022 uh, tax. Um, but in the meantime, I think what would be really useful is to have a conversation with planning and to talk through a structured fee for a stormwater inspector. So. Um, a single house being built, that homeowner, that developer for that single house would pay a nominal fee. But these plans need to be checked because everything we do on our property impacts our neighbors. And um, rather than trying to clean up problems, it is so much better to be proactive as, as we've been trying to do, but we just don't have the, the money to have the staff to do that. 
But then when you get to a large development, so we've got a few of these that we're working through right now in planning, when you get to a large development, that's, you know, those folks should be paying for that review. They should be required to have a, a significant stormwater review and an inspection um, ongoing during construction that is paid for by the developer, the person that is putting that project together. It shouldn't be um, a burden on the taxpayers. Um, so I'd like to really work um, in the next couple months, if we can, on working with planning and getting a fee in place and getting this moving forward um, as quickly as we can on that, on that aspect. But we do, Terry is, has uh, been doing a great job as Lisa and the staff and the crews on the road, um, but um, Terry is going to be retiring. And I think it's going to be really hard. Um, this, is, this is back to the calendar thing and why I'm saying 2022. Um, Terry's uh, retiring, we've got, we're going to have somebody new coming on board. And when we do that, that person has already got to play catch up a little bit, uh, ongoing projects, ongoing issues, ongoing concerns. And I think it would be um, um, an added pressure to have to spend this money wisely. Um, and I think that would give us a little more planning time. I am, I'm still concerned about the vehicle, but we can, we could talk about that as well. Um, and with COVID and the economic uncertainty, um, just getting the vaccine out is a big step, um, but that doesn't mean that the economy recovers the next day. Um, and there's a lot of uncertainty, so that's the other reason I say I would like to wait. Um, and lastly, I would say that this, I don't even know that we could do this for January 2021 if we wanted to at this moment, because it is December. It would have to go past uh, council and commissioners. We have one meeting left this year and it's next week. Um, and I think that that, um, that, that time crunch is, is a bit much. So I would like us to think about doing something for 2022. And I think uh, it would be, um, we, we do have some issues we need to deal with sooner rather than later. We continue to prioritize. Uh, we get our new MS4 operator on uh, on board and, and we work through this issue together as we have, uh, but having to set some priorities um, that may not be ideal uh, in the short term for a much better long-term gain. So that's my opinion. Thanks. I have Thank one you, comment. Thomas. Um, I have one comment that uh, goes to what Julie was saying about uh, counties and MS4 communities. Us with our yes. uh, terrain and topography, we don't have legal drains in Monroe County. And a lot of counties in the state have legal drains that deal with issues like that. Um, so we're somewhat unique in that regard too. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to say that I, I feel very much the same as Commissioner Thomas. This is so incredibly important and really, it really does just cost more and more as we put things off. At the same time, people are really struggling right now. And I know that for a, um, a number of people in the Southwestern portion of the, the county are going, there are, taxes are going to be raised quite a bit this year as other townships join the fire district that they're in. So that's going to impact them a whole lot. And to put this on top of that does seem pretty onerous to me. At the same time, I do believe that the inspector is critically important. We really have to stop these problems so that we can actually hope to get caught up and make things much more livable in this county. Um, I would hope that we could be hiring an inspector by the beginning of the construction year this uh, season this year, which I believe is probably April, certainly um, have someone in place by May. Um, it's, it is such a huge problem when people have their plans okayed by the plan department and then go and do something different. And that often has big effects on drainage and 
usually not for the person who caused the problem. It's usually their neighbors or people downstream who suffer from these problems. So I do think getting someone out to make sure that people are building where they said they would build, where they were approved to build is just really vital. Um, thank you. And are there any other comments from the board? May I? Any? Um, yes, Mr. so Gibbons? I, yes, thank you. Um, so I know that there are ongoing needs within the department. And one of the things that has happened is that they have not, the, in the past that 3% allowable increase was not put into, into effect. Um, I did some calculations and had we done those 3% a year increases, we would be at uh, close to $46 a year with our, our fee. Um, and so I, I'm wondering a couple of things. Um, will, be, will we be doing any increase at all this year? Will we be doing the, the 3% or some other kind of increase? And second is, Propose what is what Commissioner Thomas and Commissioner Jones proposing? Are they proposing to table this recommendation, or just to what? What are you actually saying that you want us to do in today's meeting? I guess. Well, well, um, for me, I think but, maybe. Go ahead. Go ahead, yeah, Commissioner Thomas. Yeah, sorry. Um, I um, I would just say that we can um, address this January, February, get some information, um, you know, work with planning on what it would take to do a stormwater inspection, see what that would take, what it would bring in, what we would anticipate, um, make a determination early next year for 2022. That would be my proposal um, because even a, even a 3% is, is tough right now, just with the timing, with the calendar. Yeah, um, I agree. And I should imagine since this is a public hearing that we can just continue it until next month's meeting, um, which might be the easiest way to handle that. Um, yes, but I, I was curious. It's really hard. I'm not sure if you have all screens. I was kind of holding my hand. I, I'm, I, maybe I jumped in front of you. Are we going to uh, take public comment uh, since people showed up? I was just about to ask about that. Thank you. Sorry, I was um, afraid. If everyone, okay. if, if the commissioners have asked all the questions they want to and made the comments they want to, then we will open for public comment. Ms. Dayton, uh, please raise your hand if you have a comment to make. You will find that on the participants tab at the bottom of your, of your screen. And uh, I'll call on you as we're able to. Oh, and there will be a three minute limit for the comments. Ms. Dayton, is, has anyone an interest in commenting? Uh, yes. Um, looks like Sandy Taylor is up first. All right. Um, I just wanted to thank Taylor. you for um, allowing us to be a part of this. And I feel much better. I think that um, a lot of us were under the impression that this was a monthly increase of $35, which is a lot to some people. Um, and I think that maybe the way that it was worded in the HT was kind of a part of that. So I feel a lot better about the whole situation now that you have all cleared up that factor. So that's my two cents. Thank you. Next up is Cheryl Munson. Ms. Yes. Hello, commissioners. I thank you for your consideration of continuing uh, this uh, rate increase proposal. And I don't have uh, an argument to make since 
uh, it can certainly wait until you discuss this again. But in preparation for my first ever uh, attendance at a stormwater Zoom meeting, I did go back and look at uh, the question of what a 3% increase uh, in the stormwater fee would have provided had this uh, started out uh, years ago. And I only had information about your um, total fees uh, starting 2014, but compounding that 3% over the years brings us over uh, $650,000 that would have been added to your uh, annual budget for work project. And so I, I want to urge you to um, deal with the, the issues that you have to deal with, but also to consider having uh, small increases that, uh, that property owners can uh, work into their budgets year to year and use this to uh, take care of uh, uh, inflationary costs. And certainly we have these. It doesn't deal with your, your longstanding issues that you have to, have to tackle, but it certainly is something that I hope you will look at in the future. So th thank you. Thank you. There any other public comments? I'm sorry, this is James Farmer. I couldn't get the hand to come up on my screen. I apologize. Um, I, I submitted a letter and I just thank the, uh, the board and, and, and folks for uh, um, you know, tabling this conversation and carrying out further. And I guess a, a challenge that I have, because I also live in an area that floods often and, and, and greatly both. Um, and uh, out here on North Shore Drive. And, and we also have the contingency of dealing with one of the escape routes is Brown County, which doesn't always handle um, you know, the water as well on the backside of Lake Lemon. And so um, I, I, I fully understand the aggravation as well as the safety concerns when, when, the, when the waters come up. Um, but I guess my challenge is what, like sort of what, at what point do we make decisions on um, there are inherent risks living in rural areas. And obviously the further out you live, the more risks that exist. Um, and so like, we obviously cannot take away all the risks when one lives in a rural area and you just assume part of those. Um, when I've lived in Brown County and others, we would, could get flooded in or out and, and, and um, you know, for, for a day or two. Uh, and that was just part of the process of choosing where to live. And so that's just something I, I, I would point out is it is a rural area. It is a unincorporated area. And, and at what point do we stop these, you know, sort of the, the activity and the, and the development of the area? Um, so I, again, I appreciate the thoughts, the comments, um, and, uh, you know, and I understand we all come from different perspectives on this. So thanks for uh, inviting us here today. Thank you. Do we have any other participants who would like to comment? Uh, next up is Phil Campbell. I believe uh, they were attempting the research. Hi. Um, yeah, yeah, I live out on Stip Road. Um, hmm. What the first thing I, my, the first part of my question is uh, I saw the chart about spending $410,000 on Stip Road. I haven't seen anything happen on Stip Road yet. Um, and I, I think I can speak for everybody that lives on Stip Road once you get down the hill that we all support the $35 fee. Um, you know, I know some people might say, well, you should have, you should have thought about that before you moved out there. Well, we moved out here in 2018 and we spoke to people that lived around here and we said, Hey, we hear this road floods. And they said, well, yeah, it flooded, uh, in 2011. Um, but I've been out here, you know, I've lived here 20 years and it's flooded to where we couldn't get to the road twice. Well, we moved here in 2018 and then right after we moved here, we were flooded in for four months. So the, the, you know, the argument, well, you know, you know, the road floods, it depends on what year it is, obviously, or, or how, 
And, you know, if it was only like once every 10 years or once every 20 years, okay, we'll live with that. But when it's happening every two, three years, that's a different story. Um, so I guess, like I said, uh, I think everybody down here would say, yeah, $35 is, you, you know, you spend more than that when you fill up your gas tank. But uh, the second part of my question is, what's the 410,000 already spent for on Stip Road that we haven't seen? So I can address that. Okay. The, the 410,000 is in preliminary engineering fees, uh, uh, detailed engineering fees and permitting uh, through the Corps of Engineers and IDNR and IDEM. Um, permitting all of that ground is owned by the Corps and, they, and it's there at the lake. They're taking a special interest. So the permitting has been uh, very complex and the design fees are, uh, there was a lot put into that in, in determining what elevation to build the road so that it economically reduces your chance of flooding uh, without over, over constructing, uh, but covering most, most cases, except the, uh, you know, the, the once the disaster flood can't. Uh, at some point, the, the lake overtops and goes over the emergency spillway. And I think we uh, ended up with an elevation that's just six inches or I'll say six inches to a foot over that. And that they've experienced that at one point over the emergency spillway. So uh, a lot of there's a lot to go into uh, defining the task and then design and then permitting. Okay, thank you. I, I would like to point out also that there may be people who live where they are getting flooded in for years and years without it being a significant problem. But as more and more development occurs and there's more impervious surfaces and the weather gets worse and worse, the flooding has gotten a lot worse. So many of these people might have made a good decision originally, but it no longer is so good. All right, um, Ms. Dayton, is there any other public con comment? Lee, may I sp say one thing to that? I think, I think you made a good point. Yes. And I'm, I'm relating to the people who have asked about Baby Creek. Uh, Baby Creek is in a situation where there's just, there is just a few people back there, but Baby Creek crosses the creek four times. And initially they, they drove through Ford. They didn't even have any structures. Uh, back in the 60s, they put some small culverts in and concrete aprons over those culverts. And they still forded them. They were designed to flood just about every rainfall. And they've used those crossings since the 1960s. And it's now to the point where those crossings are breaking down. The concrete, it, uh, the concrete surface is broken down. Uh, the pipes are, are no longer functioning. They're full and water is piping underneath the road between the pipes. And it's to a point where I'm concerned that somebody's going to drive across that one day and it's going to collapse and they're going to be injured. Uh, there is a, there, there's a safety factor there. It's not a, so much a, a convenience uh, so that they can get in and out. Uh, I'm concerned that there'll be an accident there if we don't do something. Thank you. Ms. Dayton? Uh, next up, it uh, looks like there's an iPad that has a hand raised. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher this name. Yeah, Mr. Giroux? Are you saying Giroux? Yes. <laughs> That's me. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, it was my understanding Hello. that if, we, if this uh, uh, fee was approved, that it could be impacted on next year's taxes and when the tax bill came out for your property taxes that they would be included in there. And we should not delay this at all. I thought I heard a 2022, I, I about fell out of my chair. Um, this is in the, the amount of increase is very small. It's three and a half dollars a month. That's a, that's a happy meal. 
Um, it's, it's, it's not much. When you look at Medicare, Part B is going up $4 a month. That's only 2.5%. Well, so this is less than that, and it's 115 percent. It's because the numbers are so small. You've got to start this. It, way delaying it will do nothing but increase the cost down the road. And and to say we're rural versus urban, this is the opportunity that that, that one makes the county great is if you can blend those two. You've got uh, companies like Cook Medical and Baxter expanding. We've got to keep these people here. We've got to give them a reason to move here and stay here. And delaying it, it really doesn't do much of anything except drive up the cost later. Uh, we've got to go now. Uh, there's no, I, the, the increase is so small uh, that, that I, and then the people who are in a situation, that since it's part of their taxes, then they can get relief on their real estate taxes, not necessarily this tax, but on their tax in total. And, and if they need it, then they, and they deserve it, and then they should get it. And then that way that would be relief from the increase. I don't know how all that works. I'm, I'm fortunate in that I'm not impacted that way, but for the folks that are, that I, I feel for them and may, let's give them an avenue to avoid the increase, but don't delay. I, I, I can't, did I really hear 2022 to uh, and raise this fee then? That's, that's, that's a long time. It may not seem long, but it's a very long time for the people who have to live on these crumbling streets. And it's a, there is a safety issue too, for, from a, my own personal point of view. I can't, I'm afraid to ride my bike down the street or I'm afraid I'll get hit by a car. And when the two cars are facing each other, it's a game of uncertainty. Who pulls over, who doesn't, who has the right of way, what do we do? And, and God forbid a, a service vehicle pulls in to work on someone's house, then there's no way around. So anyway, I, I, I'm getting a little emotional here. I shouldn't, but, um, Let's not delay this at all. We, the, the increase is not that significant. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else want to make a comment? Or ask yes, it no looks like Chill is up next. Yeah, this is Chris Hill. I, I live on the end of Baby Creek. Actually, what Terry was talking about a while ago. Um, it's like he said, originally, we forwarded the stream just right th straight through the water and the concrete culverts that they have now are the fords absolutely are deteriorating to the point there are slabs of these breaking apart and the neighbors have actually gone out with sacks of sacrete and put back on these things just to keep them in a little bit out of disrepair just so we can still go through them. I understand about living in the country. I've lived out here my, my whole life. My family has owned this piece of property since 1934. So I have enough history on when this road used to flood, when the lake still wasn't even available and it would flood for months at a time. So now it's down to days at a time, but it still does flood and it still is a nuisance. And, um, you know, along with it flooding like it does and everything carrying over, the, the gravel that has built up in these culverts is what's causing the issue. They've crushed down to the point the, the material can no longer flow through them. So it just, and there's no way to fix it other than tear it out and start over. You can't dig it out. You, I mean, the, the guys come out and do a great job, but when they dig the hole in front of it bigger, it only holds another hundred gallons and then it's flooded again. So I would just like to say that most of the residents out here on Baby Creek are in favor of the increase and uh, in favor for it as soon as possible. I appreciate the board's time and thanks for all your hard work, Terry and Lisa. Thank you. Is there any more public comment? Uh, it doesn't look like um, there are any hands raised. Uh, we do have uh, two uh, phone numbers. Um, which wouldn't be able to raise their hands. So if they wanted to talk, now would be a great time but, for them to unmute yeah, themselves. I... All right. Those of you who are on the phone, if you have anything you wish to say, let us know. that there's no desire to speak. Um, 
Let me come back to the commissioners and see if anyone has any final comments to make at this time. Um, Commissioner Thomas. Maybe, maybe Commissioner Thomas is frozen. Um, no, I, I don't have anything. Moment. I'm shaking. I'm shaking my head. No, I don't have anything to add. Thanks. I think you were, you were frozen, so we couldn't tell you were. Um, Commissioner Gibbons. Uh, yeah, I I actually am le slightly leaning toward moving ahead with this, um, in part because bond rates are so very low right now that we could we could do more with uh, the money that we could get with things. Um, you know, we don't know what bond rates will be next year right now. They, they are very, very low, but um, that's just my own preference. Thank you. Mr. Enright Randall, do you have anything to say? Just ultimately, I do think we have to adjust the fee um, as it stands now. Um, I think there's a good, probably, uh, figure. Um, and I'm available. I, I, if anyone wants to take some opportunity to really kind of outline how some of this occur, I'm kind of just reviewing the report and, you know, um, the dollar amounts we're asking for and kind of our obligation um, to repay it um, kind of makes sense. But then there was a comment saying that uh, earlier that we can only bond for certain amounts. So are these the amounts on the report that we would be anticipating to bond for? Or are we looking at bonding smaller amounts where we can pay it back you know, in a faster manner than 10 years? So I guess my real point is if we move forward and this is kind of intent to like go for bonding, I'm not against that. I just have to understand it a bit more before I can really get behind it. And also, you know, uh, a lot of the reasons that um, these, all these projects piled up was, you know, uh, to try to get matching funds or uh, to wash some of the costs. So um, I hate that to be a driving force is uh, the reason why is because we have projects that had built up because, you know, that kind of catches me off guard. Um, and also, you know, uh, just it being a race, um, something I discussed that I, I really would like to expand the way that we assist the ratepayers. A lot of this looks like uh, uh, projects that are needed to be done in the right of way, which makes sense. There's a lot of safety concerns. We also have a water quality measure here. Um, and I would really love to see more strategic approach of how we're going to assist uh, rate payers um, with uh, issues that might raise on their pri private property with, uh, you know, stormwater impacts, that's more of a water quantity. And then also how we're gonna get monitoring stations out there so we can start seeing about water quality. And um, the strategic plan addresses some of these, but you know, again, uh, without all of that kind of more outlined, it's really hard for me to want to support a, a significant increase. Um, to council member Munson's point, I would be very supportive to kind of retroact the 3% increase and get to the amount that we should be at currently that would bring in an additional uh, half a million annually and then try to really make sure that we have a long-term plan moving forward, um, you know, where in two years, I'm not looking at a 115% increase to finish projects that we were intended to get some type of cost sharing 
measure on. Um, I'd rather be able to defer to our strategy and our plan that we set forth moving forward and make sure that it kind of meets that whenever we look back. Um, ultimately, I understand the need of getting these done, but that's just my position. And um, thank you. Richard, Mr. Quillman, would you like to address the bonding questions, um, which I believe were, what, is there a cap on the bonding we can do? I think, um, I think there's, there's a good point here in that we're not necessarily thinking of taking the entire budget and putting it into a bond. Once we agree on an increase, we still have to allocate that toward improving our service and updating equipment, getting the inspector. There's multiple things in there and just a portion of any increase will go toward uh, an allocation toward a bond. Um, so I, I think there's, I think the, the this site or the, the appearance seems that we're going to take all that money and put it uh, put it into a bond, it, it not necessarily. Um, and I think also one of the other questions was maybe like the length of bond and projects. And um, I think Tron had made that um, comment earlier about the, you know, if you do a 10 year bond, then okay, we can't do any other projects due to paying that, that yearly um, bond payment. Um, that's something that Terry and I have also discussed that, okay, um, I think we kind of, we, we got the options from the FSG to give us some, a little bit of a guidance on a direction to go. Um, and then once we, you know, realize where we're at, whatever the board or um, if, if it makes it through all the final stages of passing, whatever the increase is, then I think at that time we decide, okay, yeah, we definitely um, talking to the board, want a stormwater inspector, number one priority. What can we do outside of that? Um, you know, our VAC truck is um, shot and we bought a used one years ago. Um, a new one's a half a million dollars. Uh, do we look at that and maybe do a lease purchase? Do we um, maybe try and um, put that as a, a a wish list request in a future commissioner's bond. Um, so there's different avenues that we can look at. Are we set to a 10 year bond? Are we set to um, uh, go that direction? No, um, but we cannot, I, I'm not comfortable of adding anything to our budget, not even a position until we know what direction that we're taking. And um, I just, um, yeah, I, we're not set on, we're going to do a 10 year bond or we're going to take the whole budget and put it into a bond. Terry didn't want that. I didn't want that. Um, that that's definitely not our goal. Thank you so much for clarifying that. Um, because I'm just going off the report and mm -hmm. it just kind of groups it together as a 10 year bond. I think, yeah, I think it was good guidance for us on how a bond can work, how a bond can play into the overall bigger picture for us and give us options. Of course, there are grants out there. Uh, we've looked into a grant, um, some grant options. It was $100,000, I believe, $90,000 up front to be able to hire a consultant that is familiar with those grants to write those grants. And then we didn't want to jeopardize spending that kind of money um, because you're not a guarantee. And then come to find out it basically wasn't a grant. It was a loan. Um, so we're, we're learning as we go that, you know, there's options out there, but there's also consequences to some of those options that um, why would we want to do a loan when we could maybe bond a little bit more and do two projects versus just one. So um, we just have a lot to think about, but we know we couldn't go forward. And as you can see with the FSG report, you really couldn't go forward without some type of increase. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Does anyone else have any, any, uh, any other commissioner have any comments or questions? I, th I do. think Julie does. Yeah. Um, so um, I, don't, I don't want us to get bogged down today in, I think we have a long list of 
options and priorities and I don't I, I would be afraid to get bogged down into how many bonds and what years and all of that right now because that's not on the table um, and so if I could try to refocus us back um, I think I think what I would um, ask um, I have I have two questions um, related to what we've heard and what we've talked about the first one, and I'll ask them both. Uh, the first one is for Dave Schilling about the process of increasing the stormwater fee um, and what happens next, um, and if it's possible to do it in a half in a half year instead of in one year. Um, my second question is for Lisa and Terry about um, taking a half step and whether uh, and and bearing in mind that I would still like us to look at having the people who are doing the development pay for a portion or a good amount of the stormwater inspector program. But uh, where, if you think that helps enough to go a half step now uh, toward equipment and personnel. So two different questions. Thank you. Julie, I'll, I'll answer that first one. Uh, procedurally, you're required to have one hearing on a rate increase. And so this rate increase was advertised at 75 bucks. Uh, so as long as the, the rate increase is, is equal to or less than that, you do not have to hold an additional hearing. So you can close this hearing and, uh, you know, uh, withhold action until you're ready on it uh, until next year or whenever you decide. Uh, if you wanted to uh, adopt any kind of increase uh, and wanted to, I mean, you could do it any time next year. Uh, you would just have, if, if it's not associated with the tax collection time, then you would have to send out individual, you know, bills on your own. Uh, that's why it's always been collected with taxes because it's more convenient. And so I don't know when uh, the treasurer mails out the notices uh, probably sometime in April, and so they're they're probably prepared uh, early April or or sometime in there. But in any uh, increase you uh, you might decide to implement could be collected then at the first taxing, or you can wait till the second one. But uh, so there's no no limitation on that. You can do it any time you want. It is not a tax; it's a fee, and so there's no there's no year wait. Uh, for it to be collected or anything like that. On the 3% increase, that was an arbitrarily selected uh, limitation that the county imposed. It's not related to state law or anything under the stormwater ordinance. So that can be changed at any time by the county commissioners. And again, just remind everyone that any, any, uh, any fee that uh, is recommended has to also be approved by the county council. So there's another step in the process. Thank you. Lee, Lee, this is Terry. I have a, a fellow that's uh, trying to get in to make comment. He's on the phone and he's not able to get through. Is, is it all right? I'd like to give him a chance to speak. Terry, do you want to answer Julie's question first? Um, yes, uh, you'll have to ask me again, Julie. I'm trying to do too many things at once here. That's okay. Uh, I thought it was easier to ask it once since my internet's a little wonky. Um, so uh, the question is whether a sort of a middle ground half increase, um, like um, instead of 35, if we went 20, um, for example, on the fee, um, would that be um, helpful in terms of personnel and equipment in the short term, and then we can look at another step for 2022. How does that sit with y'all? That's all or me? I think it's a step, I'll answer then, Terry. Um, I think answer? <laughs> definitely a step in the right direction. Um, uh, it would address uh, doing the equipment need and um, because then you can look at options, whether it may, might be a lease purchase agreement or um, what we would need to do. Um, and then again, it depends on what the increase would be, be that you'd want to look and see what that additional revenue would be before you say, yeah, this is what we can do with it. Personally, Julie, I would like to see um, 
a, an increase that would allow the next person that's going to sit in my chair here uh, to see plans out for three or four years uh, so that they're not going through this and, and they can we can show them direction uh, rather than a, a short-term quick fix is the way I'm seeing it that way. That's just my personal opinion. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? Yeah, I give that uh, phone number to the help desk to see that they can get it, they can get this fellow connected. Three four zero three two nine seven. I see. The the number this fellow is calling from is eight one two three six nine two zero one zero. It's a Todd Todd uh, Shansmeyer. You know. uh, I've sent a request to a mute Todd, um, but he, uh, they have to physically press a button on their phone to okay the unmute. Okay, I think he can hear you. Am, am I, uh, oh, can, hear can you hear me now? All right, great, thank you. Uh, I appreciate, this is Todd. This is Todd Schnatzmeyer. I'm director of Indiana Limestone Institute and been following this uh, for the last couple of years now, I guess, since this discussion started. Uh, really appreciate the clarification that uh, you all have put forth today. I think it was very good. Um, the, the one thing I wanted to understand clearly is we are at this juncture only talking about an increase in the ERU number and no other language in the ordinance at this time. Is that correct? That's correct, Todd. Uh, I'm, okay. I'm familiar with the issue in our conversations with the, uh, the industry and uh, I'm trying to do this a step at a time. So at this time we're talking about the ERU. Okay, and I appreciate that very much, Terry. And I, and I think you guys have really lent a lot of good clarity to how the funds are managed and, and used and what the necessities are. Um, so thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Uh -huh. Thank you. Anything else? I have one further comment and I guess um, depending on, um, I'm, I'm kind of in, in the position to agree with uh, Commissioner Githens that we need to move forward um, and as far as uh, timing goes with sending it out uh, with our tax bill, I'm curious um, if we're able to do that uh, in a timely manner, manner if we bring this discussion up in January or do we need to really figure out how to move forward to get that out in a timely manner? Uh, manner? Uh, it does cost quite a bit to send, send out individual uh, fees. So um, I, I'm just kind of curious um, because I, I do feel like we have to adjust it. How are we going to adjust it moving forward and what amount? If we wait until our... Um, January meeting to make a decision about this, it will still have to go to the, the commissioners in the council to be approved. So that, Mr. Schilling, can you give an estimate on what amount of time that would take? Yeah, I would say as long as, uh, as, as, long as that was uh, pinned down by March, that would be, a, that would be okay. I'll confirm that with the treasurer, but I think. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else? So, well, I guess I'd, I'd like to hear from, it sounds like um, uh, Mr. Enright Randolph is is okay with a half measure. I just want to see what my colleagues thought about proceeding with with a partial increase now and then looking at the rest 
um, next year. So, um, yeah. Um, so does now mean in January, Commissioner Thomas? Well, I, um, so well, February, I mean, that, that time we're, we're not doing it today is what I'm asking, I guess. We, we, I, I guess we could do it today is what I'm saying. And that's my, that's my question is we could go with a, 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 a measure of it today, but if we didn't do it today, I think we have to be prepared to make a decision in January because to put, although we meet every week, the council does not meet um, that often. And um, so to have it at one of their meetings and to have it passed by March is a tight timeline. It's a very tight timeline. So, um, uh, so I, I guess I, I, I wanted to see what, what you all thought about timing. Yeah, I, I like the idea a whole lot. Honestly, I would kind of like to be able to explore it a little bit more, see exactly what it would allow and what the ramifications would be. Um, so I would be a little more inclined to wait until January so we have a chance to discuss this a little bit more, get a bit more information about what this proposal would mean. Um, but I'm perfectly willing to take a vote today if that's what my colleagues would prefer. So I'll leave it to you guys. Question. I guess I need a motion. We have a question. I just was going to ask. Um, so if you do table this until until January, as you wish. Um, what type of more information would you be wanting us to gather at that time? I'm just thinking that between now and your first week of January meeting is the holidays. So if we're going to have to reach out to somebody like FSG or something to get some more number crunches, I'm not sure we can make that happen. Um, I, I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, not sure what else um, you would be wanting if, if you'd, um, how in depth you would want that Im additional information if we could get it before that January meeting. We'd be happy to if we can. Lisa, let me ask you a question also. What? Um, if we, if they approve or, or approve adopt half of it or the lesser amount, are they going to prioritize how that, do they have input on how that would be spent toward bonding for a project or developing the department to provide a better service. Uh, as I'm reading it, if we don't go for the, what we projected, then we're not going to be able to do both. We're going to have to compromise somewhere in there. How would how do they see the, that compromise coming? Well, actually, what I had in mind was that hopefully you would tell us. Um, I I. We kind of like to know what can and can't be accomplished with that amount of money. At the same time, I really don't want to risk this not going forward in at least some helpful manner. So I am willing to take a vote today if that does seem best. Lee, and I can, is that I can make information that you could. Yes, I can generate a priority ahead. list and, and say, you know, whatever amount you would have, would agree to, it, it will get you this. I think Julie has something. Yeah, um, I, I think for me, I just want to at least initially explore the option of, of adding a, an inspection fee for mm -hmm. developments. Um, and I think we could have some initial conversations, they wouldn't be anything, you know, set in stone, but it would just, no pun intended, but it would just be at least an initial um, um, foray into thinking about what it could mean um, in terms of cost and revenue and, and, you know, given, you know, 2020 numbers, what we would, what we might be able to do, because actually completing that process of assessing a fee and all of that takes time to go through the, the, 
the steps, but also because we don't actually have someone to do it right now. So um, it is very preliminary, but I, I think, and I don't think that's anything FSG can do. I think I just need yeah. to, you know, let's just all have a conversation with planning and, and um, I've, I'm hopefully going to speak with some planners this week. So um, I'll, I'll raise this and see, see if they can come up with some ideas um, to send to, to both of you and um, to incorporate into your, your spec. I think that's a good idea to have that list of what if it's 20, what if it's 30, what if it's 35, what, you know, what we know it's going to be if 35, but what if it's 25, what if it's 15, um, you know, that, that will be um, a useful document for the public to see um, as well as for us. So I, I think that's a great idea. Um, so if, if everyone seems to be, we seem to have come to a consensus, um, but let me just throw um, a motion out there that we um, uh, continue this to uh, this item to our once, well, you have to close the public hearing, but once you do that, we continue this item to January. I have a second. Was that a motion to close the public hearing? No, that's a motion to continue this item to January, our January meeting. Um, I'm and let clarify with Mr. Schilling. Um, we do not need to continue this meeting at all, do we? As we've actually taken care of the public hearing portion of it, so we can just. <laughs> contemplate the this particular item at our next meeting in yeah, normal you sort of way. Yeah, you you could close the public hearing and then and then just continue your consideration of this item till till your next meeting. Thank you. So are you is that what your motion is encompassing, Commissioner Thomas? Uh yeah you you are the one who closes the public hearing, but my motion is to continue this item um, to January. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? You have to close the, meet the public hearing first before we do that? That was my, I'm not trying to be contentious here. That was my understanding that the, yes, no. Schilling? I think e e either way, I don't think, I don't okay. think it matters, but uh, you'll have to do, you'll have to do both of those things at some point today. <laughs> you don't want to stay with us all night. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second. That's fine. And do I, okay, let me clarify again. Do I need a separate motion to close the meeting or would this suffice? Uh, yeah, I think you need a separate motion, and you can take that after this, the vote on this. Okay. That's okay with you, Commissioner Thomas. Yeah, it's fine. So I don't want to prolong, but are we going to, now that we have a motion and a second, are we bringing it back? Because I had one further uh, comment. I didn't hear a second. I seconded. Ah, good. Thank you. I, my comment um, is, yeah. is just with the report, the FSG report, and on page 21, it, it's uh, alternative four. Um, it shows a 56% increase, which is roughly around $18. Um, it also uh, shows that it can uh, handle the expansion of two field crews in, um, in 2022. Uh, it shows that we can get the inspector as well, um, fleet uh, replacement and additional costs. Um, and then even uh, debt services covers about 25% if we did an increase like that with the financial breakdown. So um, when you look at the long range strategic plan too, um, there is a nice little 
uh, chart on page 19, where it kind of shows these uh, this graph of where uh, costs are, where we potentially go if we encompassed all of the options below. And um, it looks like we definitely need to uh, tackle those first uh, three options. Um, and then they have bond options highlighted separately. Um, I'm not against bonds. I don't want to speak out that I am. I just want everyone to know that I'm in a learning process. So I will definitely defer to uh, other people's experience in that area. Um, so I just wanted to make those two comments. I, I was fully um, supportive of um, acting on an increase that would support the inspector and the crew and the equipment. Um, so that amount um, on alternative four is something I would be willing to support um, even today. Um, and I know we have a motion, but if it fails and we add that, that's something I would be able to support and act on today. Uh, it's a 56% increase, which probably still isn't great, but uh, it's another option I just wanted to uh, address. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we should vote on the motion that's on the floor right now. Mr. Quillman, would you please call the roll? Yes, I will. Tron in right Randolph. I'm going to vote no because uh, I would defer to the way my colleagues want to move this forward. So uh, I'll just vote no. Lee Jones. Yes. Penny Givens. Yes. Julie Thomas. Yes. Uh, it, it's advanced, proved at three to one. To continue Thank it to you. January, is that my understanding it right? Uh, January 13th, I believe. Mm -hmm. So that makes your second suggestion irrelevant, Mr. Enright <laughs> Randolph. Um, right. I just wanted to make that comment that I was prepared to support that if it moved in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Is there any further comment about any of this tonight? Thank you so much. Uh, sorry if any part is difficult through this, but I think uh, everyone at Storm uh, Water uh, Board or Storm the Storm Water staff and legal and everyone else that took time to come today and uh, express uh, their concerns. Uh, thanks, everybody. Yes, thank you to everyone. Um, definitely, this was very worthwhile, and and it was good to hear from so many from the public. Um, and at this time, I believe I need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. Would you please call the roll? Yes, I will. Lee Jones. Yes. Tron Enright Randolph. Yes. Penny Givens. Yes. Julie Thomas. Yes. Approved four to zero. Thank you. And if there is no further business. Um, Lee? I believe. Could I make a report? Yes. <clears throat> Thanks. Uh, this is Dave Schelling from the legal department. I was just wanting to give you a little update on the stormwater management ordinance. Uh, I've had some time lately, so I've done some revisions to chapter six, which is the karst ordinance. And those revisions involved taking what might be regarded as zoning ordinance provisions out of there and keeping the focus solely on uh, the stormwater uh, concerns. We don't want anyone to, to accuse us of adopting a zoning ordinance under the guise of a stormwater management ordinance. So I've separated those out and those cars, those cars provisions that I've removed 
we're, we'll need to make sure that they appear in the new zoning ordinance that we're putting together. I went through the definition section. Uh, there was about 348 definitions uh, in the draft. Uh, I went through the ordinance provisions and the technical standards to see if those definitions actually appeared in the text. And uh, 82 of those definitions appeared in neither the ordinance nor the standards. So I've removed the, or I've got those marked off to remove. I've added four new definitions uh, that address some concerns that have arisen recently and revised two others for the same reason. And so if I can get a copy from Terry of the technical standards with the definitions in a word format, I can make those changes and get that out for review uh, because I only have a, a PDF of that document. Uh, and so what I see needing to be done uh, is once this, uh, we put together the uh, revisions to chapter six and the definitions, send it back to Christopher Burke uh, for a final review to make sure that the uh, engineering, which I have no, you know, no comprehension of, matches up with the requirements of the ordinance. Um, then we need to have a list of the studies that were relied on to prepare to to make the findings in chapter one of this or this this the first section of this. And Christopher Burke, I think, was going to be working on those. Uh, we need to have a list of the best management practices identified. And then um, we just finally need to check the inspection and uh, permit forms to make sure that they sync with the new permitting software um, that uh, the county has purchased. So. After we do those things, I, I think it would be ready for uh, public consumption. David. Thank you. May, may I? Um, how does that, our conversations about uh, charging review fees uh, in, the, in the form of permit fees, uh, is that a pretty straightforward address? I think that, that that's covered in here um, as far as the, uh, the stormwater or ordinance. Um, and we, we can look at those and, and talk about them and, and make sure that they sync up with planning when we adopt uh, a new zoning ordinance to see whether there's a need for anything else in the, uh, in the planning ordinance as well. Okay, I was thinking it was just, it was a, the main thing was just setting the fee amount. And there was a question earlier about uh, uh, what is an appropriate amount for the time spent on it. And I, I'm, I'll be looking into that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we need to give you input on that amount. The, the yeah. fee. <clears throat> and I guess, I guess the clarification of the scope of what that, uh, that process involves, because um, there's the option of having the county do the review, or there's the option of having the uh, the homeowner or the developer hire the engineer to have that done, and then you review those plans as well. So I think that needs to be be talked about a little bit. See yeah. how how specific you want to get. Thank you, Dave. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and it doesn't sound like there's any action or anything we need to take on this today. No, that was just an update. Okay, thank you. So if no one has anything further. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the discussion. Thank you for um, looking at different options and supporting the department and, and working with us for a great direction. So we appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Well, thank you too. Um, we never would have gotten here without you. So. 
Um, all right. At this time, I believe I can adjourn this meeting. So it is adjourned. Happy holidays, everyone.